So uh, we took a little hiatus to go and hang out with 677,000 other aviation enthusiasts this past week. So how many people were there? 677,000? Something like that. Seemed like about 675 to me, but I'm not counting. <laughs> so Oshkosh 2023 is now in the rearview mirror. And what did you think? It was a blast. Um... It was insane how many, uh, for us this year was very different than previous years. We kind of felt like we did very little watching the air show, uh, very little even seeing airplanes. Oh, we still got to see the coolest airplanes, though. But we did see a lot of Vans aircraft, uh, but what did we see a lot of? People. A lot of people. And it was all about the people this year. Felt like we couldn't even walk 10 feet without uh, someone coming up who's watched the channel saying hello to us. And that was kind of awesome. I couldn't even get to the bathroom sometimes. I had to be like, hang on, hang on, I'll be right back. <laughs> so we um, felt like you know, this Oshkosh, and we're not complaining by any stretch of the imagination. Spent a lot of time just talking to all kinds of people from other builders watching us, non-builders watching us. Uh, it was all about the people this year at Oshkosh. It was a lot of fun. It was very enjoyable, and it was kind of heartwarming. Yeah. It's uh, there are times that we sit here in the garage with the in the heat with the cameras rolling. Going, why are we doing this? But now I think this year I had always said, if we ever met somebody who said that they had no desire to build or didn't think they could build. But because they watch our channel, they decided that they are going to try building, that our channel would be a success. And this year at Oshkosh, we actually met that person, that, that, that couple. couple. Uh, they came up to us after the forum that we did. Um, it was uh, Sony and Greg. Sony and Greg came up to us and said hello and kind of told us their story that after watching our channel, they felt that. They could build an airplane, and they are starting their journey building, and we could not be more humbled and um, proud of them for, for starting their journey. So uh, knowing that we helped at least one person, um, but it wasn't just one person, was it? I'm excited for them. Yeah, so lots of people came up to us. So what did we do this year at Oshkosh? Well, we camped. So our Camp Bacon family, uh, always ever supportive. Uh, it's a group of, we had 18 um, camping credentials this year, uh, so 18 different people. We buy them about two weeks early from the start of the show, and uh, our volunteers and Camp Bacon, uh, Dan Coyne, uh, Mark, uh, I'm going to butcher his last name, R R Ratzenberger, Ratzenberg, uh, Mark, uh, Ken Mist came down from Canada, they stake out our 18 spots in a pretty prime location and uh the more important part uh ken miss guarded those uh 18 spots uh for the two weeks until people started showing up because you gotta, you gotta fight for your space in camp choler so all we had to do we were lucky because of our volunteers we just showed up and set our tent up and uh enjoyed enjoyed it but uh, thank you scott and martin Scott and Martine, uh, who are locals, who uh, we, we ship most of our stuff to them and they haul it to us. Uh, seemed like a small tent that you bought. Yeah. 75 pounds later. Um, and um, a tarp that could uh, cover most of those 18 uh, campsites. Thank you. But uh, it was a fantastic week of camping. Um, then uh, we went into the show and we kind of had our mission, right? We had some things that we wanted to check off our list this year. Um, so we... Um, First on my list was I wanted to find out more about fiberglass work because we're coming into a phase where we're going to start doing some cosmetic stuff, you know, wing tips and elevator tips and things like that. It's all fiberglass. And I th thought this plane was made out of aluminum. What do you mean fiberglass? Right. But I didn't know anything about it. So we sat in on a forum just intro to fiberglass and that was really nice it was put on by sport air um and one thing i think we've really decided is they have an online program that um maybe they should advertise a little bit more than they are but uh, you can do an online program that's going to teach you a lot more or you can book one of the sport aero classes that they do throughout the country and go get hands-on like two days of experience with fiberglass 
But even that one hour demonstration that we uh, went to in their workshop was really helpful. And uh, maybe it's not hopeless. Maybe we can do this fiberglass that will come up. Oh, we can. We can. It's just a matter of getting the right technique and learning what we need to learn. So I'm really thinking getting some of the fiberglass materials and just walking around the house and build farins around fence posts and uh, different parts around the house just to start practicing some of the techniques uh, long before we lay fiberglass down on the airplane. But um, so the, the sport air fiberglass class was a great success. We did that pretty early in the week. It was like Monday. Monday. It was like one of the first things we did. Uh, well, it was right after uh, the pilot partner forum, right? Yeah. And Ken did a forum on um, flying gloves, which was very informative. So we had a lot of people show up to the uh, how, how to run a flying club was the title of the forum. Uh, it's kind of centered around keep it simple, keep it balanced and of course use pilot partner to manage it um it kind of makes it a lot easier man it feels good not to wear a red t-shirt finally i know every single day <laughs> 10 days of wearing our red t-shirt so we're deliberately uh and other other clothes not showing our pilot partner our november 14 victor echo logos uh kind of feels good uh handed out a lot of t-shirts we brought 150 yeah. Uh, we passed out a lot of t-shirts, especially at the RV14 meetup that we had at the Roxy. So the Roxy is my favorite place to eat at Oshkosh. And uh, we had a huge group of RV14 builders show up. And not even just RV14 builders. We had a bunch of... And an RV12. An RV12. Just because you're too short of a 14, you're still part of the crew. Uh, really enjoyed <laughs> uh, meeting everybody there and got to meet... Somebody that I was looking forward to meeting, Andrew Kilroy. He even showed up to the uh, RV uh, uh, Builder meetup. Um, a lot of us have really watched a lot of his videos, uh, and he, he he's quite blank about it. If you're looking at his videos on how to do things, uh, do it at your own risk because it, it's his way. It may not be the right way, but watching his videos has given me confidence and a lot of the steps that we had to do, even though we did it differently in a lot of cases. Uh, but just seeing some of the thought process that he put in to get in through certain steps has really helped us. And it also kind of taught us that there's multiple ways to do things. Yes. So, um, but just seeing old friends, making new friends, um, that's all that meetup was really about. It's like we've been talking to these people on social media for over a year now and we're kind of like a little family so it's always good to hang out with people uh we did the rv builder bash uh or the not the builder bash the beer bash the beer bash uh that was earlier in the week it's uh they rent a little house area in the backyard and have kegs of beer and uh, all the rv builders van Air force put that on and that was a fun time um saw gill uh from build fly go so we ran into Mike and he came up to me and he was like I got something for you and I was like for me and he was like yeah and then he was telling us all about how his sister does stitching for aircraft interiors and things like that and he's like and I made a glare shield in your colors you got to go check it out I made it just for you so he had a little sample for us of the glare shield uh, from Aircraft Specialty Flight Lines, who he works with, and it's it's our colors. I mean, it's kind of perfect. It's a nice black uh, leather with a red stitching on it. So, uh, if you're looking for a glare shield, go through Aircraft Specialty Flight Lines. They have it on their website, and you can order it. Um, apparently, there's lots of colors and customizations that you can do. Um, but once we made it down to the booth, uh, Steve had the sample for us and it, it looks beautiful. So I hadn't even thought that far ahead, but we've got people thinking of us and Mike has really contributed a lot to the builder community because he's often thinking of these improvements and ideas, even the fuel system that we've talked a lot about. He originally, uh, had the concept of that and worked with Steve to, actually do the engineering and provide that to us to make our life a lot easier so I can have a left and right tank that points in the right direction. In the, um, so, Mike, we, it was a pleasure actually getting the chance to spend some time with you and, and, and learn a lot about some of these mods that are happening. And the um, 
alternate air door is another one of the ideas Mike had that he's teamed up with Steve at Aircraft Specialty Flight Line to make available to us. So it's a new thing this year. Um, the stock van's alternate air door, once you activate it, you have to take the callan off to reset it. Uh, this is a different attachment place. It seems pretty easy to retrofit you if you've installed the stock van's one, but now you can push and pull it and actually reset it from inside the cockpit and not have to remove the the cowlin anymore. So uh, that was um, really interesting, uh, getting a chance to talk with Mike and learn a lot. Um, At our RV meetup, we were passing around uh, a red handle. At first, I didn't know what it was. Everyone was just like, oh, yeah, check it out, check it out. It's a canopy handle. And I was like, oh, who makes that? And he's like, I do. The guy at the end of the table, another builder. Yes. Another builder made product that looks fabulous. So we're absolutely putting that handle onto our our build and we'll show what that looks like here. But um, it's a replacement for the handle that um, stock uh, vans provide stock. It's a little bit neater, cleaner more stout design and uh, it'll go right over our heads to help us open and close the the canopy yeah and it happens to be powder coated in uh, our colors <laughs> so uh we worked it out with him and uh, we walked home with the w w w with it uh but uh definitely look into that there's so many people who build little one-off modifications that makes building these planes so much fun so you you walk all over the uh fairgrounds you know eight months pregnant well, not exactly. See, Ken was smart enough to realize that because I said I can do it doesn't necessarily mean that I can do it. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to be able to walk. I'm going to be able to do whatever I want. And that was not the case. I am very thankful to my husband. He got me a little scoot around that uh, kind of saved my life. A little electric three-wheel scooter, which... Uh... The first day we tried to take him to the show, we were kicked out. Um, we could not bring it into the show until we met with the Oshkosh um, security team to get an ADA uh, exemption, and they put the nice little sticker on it. And after that, she had a three-wheel electric scooter. Now, the book advertised 11 miles. I was like, there's no way this thing's going to actually handle 11 miles at Oshkosh. Holy crap, that thing kept on going. And it never died on me. <laughs> and one day we just got to charge it. So she did two full days of Oshkosh on it, and it was just about dead at the end of the second day. Yeah. Uh, but she made it back to the campsite on it. Uh, the thing was fast enough to keep up with golf carts. So when we're outside of Camp Shoulder going to towards the front gate, she would pile in behind a golf cart, and I would be on my bicycle trying to keep up with her. And it was really controllable at walking speed, so you're able to walk through the crowds uh, without running anybody over. Uh, Surprisingly, we were expecting at least one casualty uh, from the golf cart this year, but uh, from the electric scooter. But uh, we successfully avoided all injuries. Uh, the thing turns really well and goes really fast; just does not do both at, at the same time. time. We even had Mike from Cleveland Tools taken for a test drive. If you're in the market for an electric scooter, I mean, this one's pretty all right. So we, uh, I found this on Amazon, and I'm going to put in the um, description and maybe in the info card right here uh, the link to it so you can click and um, buy it. It was like $600, but wow, it made a big, big difference. It was a great little scooter, and it folds up tight and does a great job. What was your favorite thing that you saw um, in Bowen Plaza? The Super Guppy. Oh, that Super Guppy was amazing. So my thing with the Super Guppy was it kind of looked like it was pregnant <laughs> and I'm pregnant. So I think we were on the same mental level. <laughs> watching that thing and just the fact that it has one hinge and the whole thing goes, it doesn't seem like it should stay together. <laughs> uh, it's just an engineer in Marvel. I mean, I guess NASA did it. So what, what do you expect out of NASA? But, um, we did that and uh, walked around that. And the Dream Lifter, uh, not to diminish the awesomeness of the seven, the modified 747 that is now carrying a lot of workload for the Super Guppy, 
but there's just something iconic about the original Super Guppy, and that was amazing to see. Yeah. So after a long day touring uh, Boeing Plaza and all the booths, I did sneak away from you to get a little rest and relaxation. But I always knew where to go to find her. Uh, in several of the hangars, they have these demo massage chairs. And uh, anytime I couldn't find Melissa, I knew to go to the nearest hangar with a massage chair. And there's Melissa giving a nice massage in the chair. You know, they said free demo. They didn't say how many. Yeah. And for $9,000, we can bring one home. No. <laughs> Do you want an airplane or a massage chair? I'll take the airplane. <laughs> oh. Uh, we had the agenda to really confirm our decision to go with Garmin Avionics or Advanced Flight Systems. So we spent some time at the Advanced Flight Systems booth trying to uh, understand the workflow of using it, uh, the, the pros and cons compared to the Garmin setup. Um, what do you think of Advanced Flight Systems? Well, that's not fair because I'm not used to using avionics. Obviously, in my training, the most avionics I've ever touched was the G5. Um, so I really was coming in with fresh eyes and it was just my experience. And I like the, it's kind of like a iPad feel to it with like the two fingers and the double tap and the swipe. Um, that was kind of neat. Yeah. There's yeah. definitely some really good things that Advanced Flight System has going for it. Um, it does a better job of allowing either screen to be PFD or MFD, whereas Garmin is a little bit more, one screen will be your PFD, and you can make the other screen a secondary PFD, but you can never make the original screen mapped, which is one thing I really wanted, but after talking to the engineers at Garmin, I realized why. Um, the advanced flight systems, you can kind of do that, but, um, I found the advanced flight systems to be a lot more button presses and a lot more memorization of click this button, do this, do that, do this. Now you get your result. And that's not what I want when I'm flying art IMC and things I'm getting behind the curve. Uh, I want my avionics to help me get ahead, not hold me back. And that's what I was concerned about with the advanced flight systems. I know that with time and practice that a lot of that will become very natural and not as much of a hindrance, but I just found it to be too much um, and just a little, little overwhelming, just all the different options. Um, I also lean Garmin because I have two, 300 hours behind a G3X already flying hard IFR in a Bonanza doing all kinds of different missions. The workflow is natural for me and makes sense. Um, so I think we solidified our decisions. We're going with Garmin. Well, the thing for me was the same price. Yes, same price. Um, so you're not really saving much. The VPX is built into the advanced flight system where it's a separate add-on uh, if you go Garmin, but it kind of all works out the same. So like, um, you're not getting... A, a deal by going advanced flight systems financially. So, and nor would advanced flight systems want to say, Hey, we're, you know, 20% cheaper because that's kind of making a bad statement in the market that, Hey, our stuff isn't as good as Garmin, but go with us because we're cheaper. Yeah. I, it's good. It's good stuff. And it, for those of you who have chosen to go with advanced flight systems, I think you have gone with a really good system that's going to treat you well. Uh, I just don't think it's right for us. Yeah, I think it's personal preference and what you're used to. Yep. So we did spend some time with Garmin and even did a one-on-one um, -on -one interview with um, a uh, engineer at Garmin who was running one of the uh, experimental sections. And um, we waited until they actually closed the door so it got quiet enough for us to do it. So that episode will be coming out soon where we do a deep dive in the components behind the system and what components are back there and that you have to think about. On Thursday, we tried something new. We had a forum. Melissa and I stood on stage and- uh, Together. Together. 
Uh, Melissa, um, I gave her a little warning on this. I don't think Melissa was completely on board with the fact that I signed us up to do this forum. Uh, and I was prepared to kind of run the show in case uh, Melissa wasn't that interested in participating. But man, as soon as it started, she just lit up and... I was did, super um, nervous. She did amazing. That forum was a lot of fun. Uh, they put us in the home builder hangar, which was to me a great honor. It's really nice. That's where Jessica Cox was uh, just, you know, several hours before us uh, doing one of her talks. And I'm like, wow, I, I don't feel worthy to be uh, on this stage. But here we were, and uh, we pretty much filled every seat. Uh, there was a lot of people came out. Uh, many of them were uh, people who watched the channel, but some people who had never even heard of our channel who are probably now watching now um, just heard our story, and we just kind of went beginning to end, why we built, why we are doing what we did, and what our dynamic is, and some of the things that we've learned. And uh, we did record it, and we'll uh, publish it on the channel here shortly so that you can see that. But that was great, but some of the people that we met, that's when we met uh, Greg and Sonny afterwards. Um, and I finally connected with Wendy, who built the RV9 with her husband, and we've been connecting on Facebook. That was that was really nice. Um, um, uh, one of our um, longtime viewers, Perry, came up to us afterwards. Man, he's a uh, um, He's just, you know, wanted to help us with the channel any way we could and i was like you know we really just do it to do it i don't we don't need help you know we're building an airplane uh the best thing that you can do to help us is watch tell your friends tell them to subscribe to the channel but we really don't want anything for um we're just doing this to document our time yep yeah, i still sometimes don't know why we're doing this channel but uh we talk a little bit about that in the forum that you'll see, but uh, but we enjoy it. Uh, it's for me, it's about the people. It's uh, getting that connection with different people and having lots of fun. Uh, but yeah, that was Thursday. And then about Friday is when we said we're kind of done with everything that we came here to do. And Friday was kind of an off day for us. We were really tired. First day we watched their show. Yeah. It was nice. Got to see uh, some of the cool things uh, in the air show, um, but you saw the... At a 22 Raptors. First time you saw the Raptors fly, uh, those things just defy physics. I don't understand um, how they do what they do, and uh, Raz, the demo pilot, holy moly, is he... Uh, he's something. That was cool. Um, just um, seeing that thing fly around was great. And um, then uh, the night show on Wednesday. The night air show is always a good time. That was our thing. Our thing is we will always be at both night air shows. And we made it down in Vintage and watched the night air show. Um, another fantastic night air show from Oshkosh. Uh, fireworks, airplanes flying through it. Um, uh, Ken from Redline was flying in the show. The RV. Flying an RV8 who he talked at the Vans Banquet, so we got to hear him. Um, and uh, then see him fly in the night air show. Always a great time. So then about uh, sometime Friday, we made the decision, it's time to leave a day early. Yeah. So we skipped the Saturday night air show, and we packed up Saturday morning and began our drive home. For us, it was a decision because we had to be back at work on Tuesday. So we could stay and see the night air show on Saturday and then uh, pack up Sunday. We would get home late Monday night and then be at work. Um, we just decided, let's move it up a day early. We needed some time at home. Yeah. And we needed to the logistics to get our puppies home. We needed Rivet and Tinkerbell back with us. So they were happy to see us a day early as well. And I uh, got home, spent a little time on Monday just recovering before we got back to work on Tuesday. Lots of naps. <laughs> Lots of naps. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, absolutely top number one at Oshkosh this year is the people. Um, we made some decisions, right? Um, some, some things changed for us on what we're planning to do in the build. Nothing major. Uh, we're still building an RV-14. We didn't... Uh, 
modify the stretch kit to turn it into a 10 or anything weird like that. Um, but um, some things that we're going to do um, are um, one with the lights. Um, Originally, we were looking at the um, the new wingtip that Vans is offering with the with aero LED. aero LED. Yeah, with aero LEDs is partnering with Vans and has a it's kind of like a Cirrus like wingtip. It's beautiful. Um, it looks sleek. So it replaces the fiberglass uh, wingtip that comes stock and um, has the LED lights built into them, uh, LED strobes, position lights all built into it. Um, looked at it, but I think it's over $4,000 for the kit. Um, it just, I couldn't justify doing that. Uh, we had already purchased the Aero LED position lights uh, and strobe light combo uh, from Vans. So they, they're actually sitting on the shelf behind us. So my plan was to go with those and go fly LEDs, uh, like the, the four-way combo lights that they have. Uh, they have a nice four-way where, um, you know, landing lights is all four, and then taxi light is just one of them that's diffused and pointed it, uh, down uh, appropriate for taxi. Uh, Paul at Fly LEDs has a really good product. So I was just going to put those in the lead and edge where the landing lights typically go. Uh, it's a pretty easy um, ad there, but we did an interview with Paul, and he has this setup that will replace, that fits right into the wingtip that's covered by the plexiglass that does position lights and um, strobe lights, all LED. And optionally, you can buy his bicker package and have the landing lights there too. Um, if you go with the bicker package, it comes with a control board, and that will do things like wig-wag if you don't have that set up through Garmin. We've got it through Garmin, so we're going to bypass that. But the thing that sold me is when you turn, if you're, you have the landing lights and strobe lights on and you land, then you turn your landing light off. The strobes go on steady but dim to about 30% power. And what that ends up doing is lighting up the edge of the runway or taxiway as you're taxiing. Decided while in the interview with them, I'm recalculated. We're going to do that, and uh, it does require the controller board, so you may have to purchase that in addition. But still, it's a much less expensive package than L Aero LED, and much brighter. It's a very um, uh, you you can go all the way up to the seven stars system that he has. Uh, get that if you need to suntan in front of your airplane. That thing is bright. The four-way um, is amazing. I've seen some great, uh, uh, one of the builders we met with, Mark, he has video of him landing. He got to about the quarter-mile final and turned his lights on. It's just the four-way one. The runway went from invisible to glowing in the dark. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, so I've been working with Stein on our panel, spent some time with uh, Nick at Stein at his booth. I told Nick that I didn't want to finalize my design because Oshkosh would probably introduce some changes. Um, it did. So our landing lights are changing. Our position lights are changing a little bit. Uh, we're going to reconfigure a few things on our panel to get more things off the panel, clean up the panel a little bit. Uh, I also want to add some indicator lights on the panel um, and even talk to uh, the gentleman who does the laser etching at Stein. Uh, about uh, doing some additional laser etching on our panel. Uh, he's got he's got all the templates and is ready to go. So um, need to sit down with Stein and do some um, adjustments before we reconfigure reconfigure before we start building that. But uh, we need to uh, continue working with Garmin to finalize some of our decisions on exactly what we're doing on that side. Um, but wow, what a great year! A lot. Spent less time at the campsite than we did previous years, it seemed like. Yeah. Normally, we sit down at the campsite and um, sit around the campfire. It was too hot for campfires this year. They barely... Oh, something else we did. Uh, with Behringer, the Sensair. So, Sensair. If you go with the Behringer system... They make an additional add-on that is typically about $400 per tire, where um, it, it's a 
that wraps around the hub and gives you uh, tire pressure monitoring via Bluetooth over your phone. They had a phenomenal show deal. And for those of you who didn't take advantage of it, you're going to cry when I tell it to you. It was $500 for all three tires. It was half off plus buy two, get one free. Uh, so for $500, we got all three of our tires set and uh, they'll be shipped out to us long before we need them. By now, we'll be able to pull out our iPhone either in flight or during pre-flight and check tire pressures and not have to uh, gain access to the uh, tire stem uh, to check our tire pressure in our pre-flight, which is um, not the easiest thing in an RV-14. So maybe we won't land 60 miles short of Oshkosh with a flat tire. First year I flew into Oshkosh, flat tire in uh, Dells, Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin Dells and... Uh, we had to drive the Fisk instead of fly it, but we did get to fly it um, the last day of the show. On Saturday, we drove back to Dell's after they fixed the tire, and we uh, flew in, and she got her Fisk arrival. And then we drove the next two years. Uh, but yeah, Behringer, um, so we already done the rest of the stuff through Steve at Aircraft Specialty Flight Lines, uh, but this time we... Um, and we were going to do the Sincere through Steve... But it was just too good of a deal to say no. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Steve, but don't worry. We get future purchases through Aircraft Specialty Flight Line. The Altair door and the uh, Glare Shield for sure. And uh, we'll be definitely using their Firewall Ford stuff. Um, so we'll most likely order through vans, but it's still Steve doing it. Uh, we did spend a, um, a couple hours down with Steve, um, seeing all his latest, greatest, um, still has the control approach, um, pedals down there, uh, the fuel systems, the, um, all the modifications that he does. Um, Steve and Tom down there, were doing a great job, uh, helping people out at, uh, ultralights. We did not run into Paul at control approach. We exchanged messages several times, but we just were never, never really able to get our pass to cross. Uh, but we are still... I'm sitting here off camera looking at our control approach rudder pedals going, I'm so glad we got those in. Those look sleek and wonderful. Um, we did not hang out at the SOS tent this year. Never met. I don't know why. Yeah, I guess SOS were uh, <laughs> bringing the uh, uh, eight-month pregnant person to the beer tent just uh, didn't make sense. But they did have great um, barbecue. They did. So, uh it's just we knew that we were going to get to do everything this year because we weren't as mobile as we were in previous years, and our energy level was less. But, Severely less. <laughs> um, but we did get to see a lot of the people. Um, almost every modification that we put on this plane, we got to talk to the people behind it. Uh, Darwin and Jimmy really? Air. Um, uh, um, Aerosport with the center console, we talked to them. Kevin at Toastin. <laughs> Kevin at Toastin. We got our low dome buttons from Kevin. Told me how to um, replace them. It's just pull them and put, pop them in. Um, no big deal there. Uh, it was funny. We walked up to Kevin's booth and he's like, here, run my booth for a little bit. Poor guy was by himself. Didn't even have a bathroom break. And yeah, you know, people coming up to his booth. You know, what would I do with this? And, you know, trying to sell him. Uh, I mean, we kind of knew what, yeah. <laughs> what people wanted. Well, ho hopefully uh, we got you a couple cells there, Kevin. Uh, your sticks, uh, they make sense. They're great products. Uh, we're really happy to uh, have them in our airplane. Um, um, and it's just so much to cover, but Oshkosh 23 is in, in the books. Looking forward to 24. The big questions for 24 is Amelia joining us and is... 14 Victor Echo joining us in 24. You're going to have to stay tuned to find out. <laughs> so thank you for joining us in 14 Victor Echo. That's kind of our quick recap of Oshkosh 23. See you next time.